professor in Department of Electrical Engineering at National Chengkung University, Taiwan. He received his PhD degree from National Kyotung University, Shinshu, Taiwan. He has been awarded by the President of Taiwan for his outstanding research contribution during the tenure of his doctorate degree. He has worked as Principal Integration Engineer in Micron Technology Taiwan and as Postdoctoral Research Fellow at NTU Singapore and at NCTU Taiwan. His current research interests include opti optoelectronic RRAM for neuromorphic computing, wide band gap oxide based image sensor, transparent and flexible devices, artificial synapse, RRAM technology, and CMOS technology. In today's session, Dr. Dayanand would be delivering a talk on an artificial electronic synapse for neuromorphic computing application. So without taking much of the time, I would like to invite Dr. Dayanand to take the session ahead. Over to you, sir. Sir, you are not audible. Please unmute yourself. Oh, okay, can you hear me? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Now you're okay. on. Thank you, Dr. Neha Kapoor. Uh, so we come yeah, share. Uh, can you see? Yes, sir. The slides are visible. Uh, okay. Oh, okay. Uh, first of all, uh, I would like to thank you, Dr. Uh, Professor Ankur Chan, who invited me as a keynote speaker. Uh, and uh, I would like to thank you to... Uh, Uh, today, uh, I would uh, I will start my presentation uh, an artificial electronic synapse for neuromorphic computing application. So actually, uh, here is my presentation. Uh, sorry, I that one. Yes. So here is the outline of my presentation. Uh, if you see the introduction, uh, my introduction divided in four categories. Uh, one is the overview of the non-volatile memories. Uh, in the no, because in the semiconductor industry there are different kind of non-volatile memories. So I will discuss on the such kind of memories. Uh, in the, uh, and another one is the second one is the overview of resistive random access memory. Uh, resistive random access memory is, uh, is the non-volatile memory actually. And the, uh, my current uh, work or cur the current work on the resistive random access memory, why I choose the resistive random access memory for the artificial synapse. And another uh, is the what is the mechanism, uh, third part of the introduction of the RM. RM, uh, basically I told you the resistive random access memory or memory stuff, both are the same things. So. If we work, on, uh, if we discuss on the RAM, so we will discuss on the conduction mechanism in the next slides. Conduction mechanism basically is not uh, 
completely developed yet. Uh, most of the researchers say it's based on the oxygen ion movement into the resistive switching layer between two uh, two uh, two electrode. And uh, some people say this is the metal ion diffusion, but is that uh, so, uh, it is not complete theory uh, developed yet. So we will discuss on the mechanism also. And the another thing is the why memory strip signer for artificial why memory strip RM for artificial signers? Why we choose artificial signers for the neuromorphic computing application? Basically, uh, the main things in our uh, in the human brain, billions of the neurons are available, but uh, every neurons are connected with signers. Basically, there are two neurons. Uh, uh, if we think, uh, if you see uh, one you know, neuron connected with uh, another neurons, and there is the one interface interface between two neurons that is called the synapse so in the biological uh, neural subsystem uh, there is the uh, synapse that's uh, uh, work for the data transmission from one neuron to another neurons so that synapse uh, that the trans transformation due to the uh, calcium ion or, uh, uh, or 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 sodium ions between two neurons so in our artificial synapse also can do work uh, 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 can do work uh, like uh, uh, biological synapse. So that uh, because in our case also we use the top and the bottom electrode, and there is the one residue switching layer between uh, between two uh, between two electrode. Uh, in our case, uh, either uh, oxygen ion movement from top to bottom electrode uh, or uh, uh, metal ion diffusion between two electrodes. So both the mechanism are the same. Well, that's why we are using here RM as a artificial intelligence. And the next part is uh, synaptic devices uh, fabrications. What we achieved, what we achieved. So I will discuss also what we achieved so far in in, in the memory devices or in the artificial synapse. And the summary of our presentation here. So here, if we come to the memory taxonomy in the semiconductor industry, if you see there are uh, two kind of memories are available. Uh, one is the volatile memories. Volatile memory, if you see the different classes of memories, DRAM, the RAM, or oh, sorry, SRAM. The DRAM is the dynamic random access memory, and SRAM is the static random access memory. The DRAM currently, uh, people are working in the uh, uh, computer. Uh, this is the like uh, if you heard DDR3, DDR4, like that. This is the DRAM. This is the main memory of the computer. But uh, the, the main problem is the volatile memory. Uh, if you uh, reduce the, if you remove the power, then data, data will gone. So you cannot storage the data after removing the power. But in this S SRAM case, also the same problem. Uh, but uh, the SRAM, SRAM device is much faster than DRAM because it used the six transistor, six transistor uh, to fabricate uh, the SRAM devices. But it is much much faster than DRAM. Uh, but it is expensive. So people are using DRAM only. And another uh, another class of memory, if we come in the non-volatile memory, if you discuss in the non-volatile memory, there is the two kind of uh, memory, the charge storage. In the charge storage case, we come in the flash memory. Current uh, uh, people are using only flash memory. This is the mature memory, actually. If you see the flash memory, flash memory also divided in two categories, one the NAND flash and NOR flash. In the NAND flash is the mature one. So currently, uh, all uh, all people are using the NAND flash memory uh, in the, our computer, mobile phones, and everywhere for the data storage and the north flash also uh, people are using but the less part nowadays so other memories these memories uh, if you come here the other memories there is, these are the emerging non volatile memories emerging means these are all are the non volatile memories but these are emerging for future prospects if you see the m ram magnetic ram pc ram phase change uh, residual random access memory fe ram sr ram but our talk is Topic is the basically on the RAM. RAM is the resistive random access memory. Basically, the resistive random access has a two part: the oxide based RAM. Oxide based RAM means the conductive filament formed which be between two uh, two electrode uh, due to the oxygen vacancy. Because uh, if you apply the voltage the top top or bottom electrode, so there is the conductive filament formed due to the generation of oxygen vacancy between the resistive switching layer. So due to the formation of the conductive filament device can storage the data. So that is the part of the oxide based RM. Another one is the CVRAM. CVRAM is the conductive bridging resistive switching memory. In this case, only AG or CU metal 
you can use as a top electrode and if you apply the top, uh, uh, positive voltage on the top electrode cu and cu metal ion can diffuse into the resistive switch there and they make the, make a bridge to storage the data so we will discuss completely in the next slides so here is the key advantage why we choose uh, uh, rm only uh, instead of another emerging technology or emerging memory devices the rm has a key advantage if you see the scalability because now it is everyone want to the uh, small size of the devices because in the small ship uh, in the semiconductor industries if you see or tsmc taiwan semiconductor manufacturing company samsung intel as well as micron technology now they they are working on uh, uh, small technology not even uh, tsmc nowadays they are claiming 3 te three nanometer technology technology not 3 nanometer technology not is very small the size of the device so how you will get how you will achieve this so scalability is the big uh, big challenge for another uh, another uh, this kind of memories so if if here you see the scalability you can go sub nanometer range rm has the big advantage because you can go to the sub nanometer technology range so that is the good advantage for the future prospect if you want to make a artificial synapse or uh, the future uh, rm technology so you can use uh, this devices due to the uh, good scalability another one is the endurance endurance is the because everyone need the high endurance high endurance means the the repeatability of the device is how long it can go so the the endurance is much higher compared than other memories the speed also if you see the speed is has the picosecond so that is the much faster than other memories cmos compatibility that is the important part you can the cmos compatibility means you can use uh, as a uh, you can connect with the transistor or you can fabricate this mass uh, mass production so where with very small size so that is the another important part uh, uh, if you come to the challenges there is the because everyone has the advantage and disadvantage for this memory has the uh, need to better uh, need better understanding of the mechanism basically uh, I, I i i told you there is the there is no specific mechanism actually but people are claiming either uh, the mechanism uh, the conductive filament form or data can store is due to the either oxygen ions uh, movement uh, into the resistive switching layer or Uh, conduct uh, the diffusion of the metal ion into the resistive switching layer so we will discuss uh, in future oh, so here uh, and the uniformity uniformity the uh, uniformity uh, uh, is the another challenge for uh, rm if you see it during the continuous switching cycles uh, 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 there is a wide variation in the set and reset voltage that is the another problem so uh, and another is the select devices in the select device also if you see Uh, there is the problem also there is the leakage path during the continuous switching cycle it shows the degradation also so we will uh, but uh, nowadays uh, researchers are working to remove the, 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 these problems and they are succeed also so that is the good uh, choice for artificial intelligence to use this device so another thing we come to the floating gate memory because the floating gate memory uh, it is Uh, invented by the Simon Z and the Bell Laboratories. The Simon Z is the actually inventor of the floating gate memory. In the uh, semiconductor device and technology book, all over the world, uh, uh, people are using uh, uh, this this books uh, written by the Professor Simon Z, and he is the current professor in National Chowton University. And he was also my co-advisor uh, in the thesis advisor during my PhD actually. so uh, if you see the floating gate memory floating gate memory is just like a mosfet uh, if you see the source and drain but uh, the main thing is here is the m2 if you see the m2 m2 is the polysilicon layer to use the data storage and this is the i2 and i1 if you see these are the dielectric layer uh, this is the s is this uh, sio2 what is the problem during the continuous switching cycles if you see here uh, data is storing and charging or discharging if you see so there is the some leakage path so after few cycle it shows the degrade degradation that's why this memory uh, uh, not succeed well but uh, uh, because nowadays the uh, so many memories can in the market like nand flash and or flash so nowadays they are not using but here uh, is the many application of the floating gate memory if you see here the see uh, dvd DV, uh, dvd players so here is a lot of 
applications. But uh, here, if you see the drawback and uh, challenges of floating gate memory, here is the also leakage path. I told you because first they use the pro, uh, polish silicon to storage the data here, but uh, and uh, again they use the Sonox. Sonox means the they use the silicon nitride and high K dielectric like HFO2, MG, uh, MGO, AL203. These are high dielectric materials, but. Uh, because the problem is the scalability here. Due to the scalability here, you cannot go in the sub-nanometer range. So you cannot reduce the device size. So that is the problem. If you are reducing the, 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 the I1 insulating layer, so again the leakage path issue, so you cannot go in sub-nanometer range. Again, they, they also use the quantum dot, but they did not succeed. Here is the same problem uh, because the scalability you cannot go in the sub nanometer range so if you are reducing the size uh, that is the problem in this memory so now here if you see the non volatile memory development trend so far uh, if you see the floating gate uh, floating gate memory 2010 almost gone uh, uh, up to 30 nanometer if you are going to sub nanometer or beyond the th less than 30 nanometer if you are if you are see so here is the old data actually, uh, but nowadays uh, if you see uh, here in the Sonos and uh, and new memory, now new memory means the NAND flash or NOR flash, but here is the NAND or NOR flash also another pro problem. After If you see, you cannot go six, uh, less than six to seven nanometer. If you are going to uh, reduce the size uh, six to seven nanometer, channel length, there is the another problem also. Here also the problem, uh, the leakage path. So you can control, you cannot control if you are uh, reducing the size or reducing the gate length size. So that is the main problem. So that's why people need uh, a new memory or new generation of technology who can fulfill the industry demand to reduce the device size. So here, so, so people are thinking, so their, uh, their device should have non volatile non volatile it should have flash memory like like it should have like flash memory like nand or nor nor flash and it should have a speed like sram sram because sram is the much faster and the and the, it should be high dense like dram high dense means uh, in a small chip you can make uh, uh, millions of devices because nowadays uh, researchers are thinking to make a high dense device or there is the industry demand also so they are all industries are thinking in the small chip you can make uh, billions of devices. So so you can connect uh, the devices with the transistor uh, in the uh, in the for the mass production also. So here is the next generation memory. So the, it should be non volatile if you send and long retention, and high speed as well uh, as fast as SRAM. It means that the speed uh, should have uh, like SRAM and high density uh, it, it, because for the high density you can uh, make the device layer by layer layer by layer so you can make 3d vertical array so here is the, if you see the plausible candidate in the past decade last few decades researchers are working different kind of emerging technology devices so there are the different memories frm if you see uh, and the uh, stt ram phase change memory, resistive random access memory. So because uh, these uh, have the key challenges also if first three, if you see the first three one, so there are many challenges so that one cannot use for the future prospect. Only we have the choice only resistive random access memory. So we will discuss here. If you see uh, the prototypical memories, if you see in the in this table, if you see the FRAM, uh, HTT, MRAM and PC RAM, if you see the scalability in the FRAM, the scalability is the main problem you see here. And the HTT RAM, MRAM also is, is okay. PC RAM is good, really good. MLC, multi-level uh, uh, multi level cells also, you can see the big problem for the F, FE RAM. HTT RAM also this is the main problem. So PC RAM is good. 3D integration is very bad. Uh, it is somehow is okay, it is good. But is the cost fabrication almost same in all three devices? Retention also almost same. Latency uh, is good for this. And here you can see the latency is good for this one. And uh, PC RAM somehow is okay. Power. But uh, the main problem is the power. PC RAM somehow is good for, for the future application, but the power is the main issue in this device. So 
to, to remove these devices, only we have choice. Restrictive switching uh, uh, devices. Who can fulfill the latest demand of industry for future application, artificial intelligence, or as a uh, memory devices? So here, if you see the comparison uh, for the devices, so here is the all non volatile memory devices. If you see here RM, if you comparison the RM, you can use the five nanometer RAM. But currently, uh, currently industries are claiming because this is the old data of 2013 from ITRS. Currently, uh, companies are working on three nanometer node also. So three three nanometer is very small size because everyone want the uh, is, is small size of the devices. They want to make the high tense devices. They want to connect uh, connect with uh, RM with the transistor for the mass production. So and the sale sale area is same for everyone. In the read current, if you see here the in the picosecond to nano ampere, pico ampere to nano ampere, and uh, write and erase time also you can see one nanometer range but in the latest papers uh, the VLSI or IDM I, I, I saw uh, it is going to picosecond is much faster than other memory device retention also if you see 10 years too good endurance also 10 to the power 12 if you compare this with another devices so if you see here uh, 10 to the power 12 and the right voltage 1 to 3 volt but nowadays the research are already developed the uh, RM that has the uh, read, uh, read voltage, write voltage is less than one volt also. That is really good. The read voltage 0 0.1 to 0 0.2 volt and uh, write energy, uh, sorry, write energy if you see here, 150 FC. Here is the key advantage I already discussed. Uh, if you see the key advantage in my scalability or already discussed previously, endurance, speed, seamless compatibility and key challenges also, I already discussed, need to better understand of the mechanism because there is no proper mechanism so far. Uh, people are claiming different kind of mechanism, but uh, basically there are two kind of mechanism still uh, uh, they are reported. So in the RTN and improved linear, uh, reliability. Reliability improvement means the high, high temperature you have, your device must have stable at high temperature. And select device also I will discuss because we have to uh, reduce the leakage, leakage path during the continuous switching cycles to stable uh, the device. Here is the, uh, uh, if you see the many application of non-volatile memories uh, in, in the industry transportation, if you see, and uh, industrial automation, smart meter, uh, enterprise storage is the general memories and storage classes that's a different kind of if you see the applications, wearable application on the smartwatch also you can see, and the mobile application, tablet, mobile phones also, and mass storage memories, the NAND memory if you see the, uh, because it's the mature one, so people are using as a mass production for the NAND plus memory. So here basically we come to the RM, because the, our topic basically RM or memory stuff for artificial intelligence system. So if you see the RM is the metal insulator, metal structure, it is very simple structure compared to other, other memory devices. So in the metal, insulator, metal. So insulator might be HFO2, MGO, AL203, any kind of uh, insulator you can use. Metal, uh, CU, AG, and uh, PT also, uh, TIN, and uh, TI, some electrode. So here, uh, if you see the mechanism, so it might be uh, the, the device, this RM device might be either bipolar or unipolar. If it is the bipolar, that is the different mechanism. If it is unipolar, that, that is the different mechanism. And uh, the metal ion based, metal ion based only, this is the CVM. I already discussed conductive bridging capacity switching memory. So it can be CU or AGI atom can diffuse into the resistive switching layer. So we will discuss in the conduction mechanism. So here is the conduction mechanism of oxide-based RM. Oxide, why we, we say this is the oxide-based RM? Because the, this, the filament is formed due to the oxygen vacancies into the resistive switching layer. If you see here is the fresh device. Fresh device, it is in the IRS state. It means that initial resistance state. Because initial resistance state, we did not apply any power for the device. If we apply the positive voltage on the top electrode, if you see here, and the negative voltage in the bottom electrode. 
Pressure to switching layer. This might be HFO2 MGO any dielectric layer. So oxygen vacancies are generated into the pressure to switching layer, and oxygen ions, this the yellow one are the oxygen ions. They move to the top electrode when you apply the positive voltage. And again, and this due to this reactions, if you come here, they these oxygen ion accumulate at the top electrode, and that is the path is create. And in this case, device switch from high resistance state to the low resistance state. so that is the case of uh, or it, it means that you can say data is saved here or data is stored here uh, between two electrode so this is the mechanism and another case uh, if you see uh, in the if it is unipolar device what happens uh, if you use the uni unipolar or bipolar if we are case uh, if we are talking about the unipolar device we have to apply the uh, negative voltage Uh, also, uh, uh, also at the top electrode, the same, same. It may, is a set and reset, or data storage rate will happen in the one side, either in the positive side or negative side. If you are in the negative case, you have to apply the negative voltage on the top electrode again. So set and reset will happen in the one side. If it, you are talking of the uh, uh, bipolar device, you have to apply the negative voltage to reduce the uh, to. Uh, to reset the uh, reset the filament or to erase the uh, data so you have to apply the negative voltage if you apply the negative voltage these oxygen ion again move back to the uh, to the vacuum to switching layer and they will recombine with the oxygen vacancy after recombine with the oxygen vacancy so here is the here is the rupture of the filament so data will gone from the device so here uh, again if you want to set the device you have to apply the positive voltage again and again here you see if application of the positive voltage that uh, oxygen ion will move by, uh, move to the top electrode again and the conductive filament will form so that is the proper mechanism of oxide based filament so if we come to the metal ion based filament if you see here because the metal ion why we are using we are why we are talking of the metal ion metal ion only cu and ag can diffuse into the resistive switching layer if you see here this curve if you apply the top to top uh, uh, positive voltage on the top electrode the cu is the top electrode here if you apply the uh, positive voltage what happens cu atom become the cu ion and they migrate from top to the bottom electrode side so and here because he here we apply the negative voltage and they recombine with the oxygen ions sorry they recombine with the uh, with the electrons and become the cu atom again and start to make a bridge here like this and when bridge is completed here and this device change its state from high resistance state to the low resistance state here is the, you can see the complete filament is formed and uh, it means the data is stored between two electrode and if you want to erase this one then then you have to apply the negative voltage in the top electrode so here in this case you have to apply the negative voltage or here also you see if you apply the negative voltage these again uh, the the oxidation happens here and cu again cu uh, uh, atom become the cu ion and they they uh, they migrate back to the top electrode and here again uh, the filament is ruptured so on the other hand if you think because uh, we uh, in the positive case we applied the compliance current actually to uh, to bound our device because compliant current can can control uh, to our device for the breakdown so if you but then the in the negative side we don't apply the any compliance current so because Uh, if you apply the negative voltage, very high current pass through the filament. This filament, and due to the high uh, high current filament, because we didn't uh, apply the uh, apply the compliance current in the reset side, so very high current will pass through the filament, and filament will be ruptured due to the Joule heating effect. This is the another mechanism uh, uh, to rupture of the uh, filament here. So data will erase from the device in this case. so here is the achieve, achievement in the rm uh, this data from idm uh, and vlsi these are the top conferences of the, our fields uh, the idm uh, international electron device meeting and very large uh, devices so here if you see that uh, this data is from 2010 to 2020 if we discuss here 
so in the read current if you see the 200 pico ampere it is really 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 low so that is really good for uh, our devices and speed if you see the 30 300 pico seconds compare than other devices another uh, another emerging devices it's much faster so far endurance if you see 10 to the power 12 also you can see and if you see uh, the retention characteristic of the device so our device or rm can be stable uh, up to 10 year at 85 degrees celsius also that is the key advantage of uh, uh, of the rm why that's why researchers are thinking to integrate the device uh, for the for the artificial intelligence system so that is the big choice that is good choice also uh, for all researchers uh, to go to the artificial intelligence system with this that's why we also uh, working on the uh, uh, on the rm to integrate with transistor to make a artificial chip to replace the biological synapse with electronic synapse so here uh, if you see the artificial intelligence there are many applications nowadays uh, if you see first one is the strategic uh, strategic gaming so and another one is the speech recognition also people are working on this another is the decision making and the and the last one is the face recognition so currently actually we are working on the face recognition, uh, recognition application so our work is only that one so we will discuss on this work here so why we choose actually uh, why we choose uh, rm only as a artificial intelligence system because in the current uh, current uh, computer why people are not not using the current computer for the artificial intelligence why they are there there is a main problem actually if you are seeing the bus this is the bottleneck issue actually in the current neuron architecture or one neuron architecture because currently uh, all computer are based on the one neuron architecture so that is the big problem of memory and cpu both are separate so there is the one uh, bottleneck we 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 say is the bottleneck issue because during the mass data storage so need high power and that this the is the hanging problem because in the our human brain the billions of the neurons so you cannot uh, use uh, such kind of uh, such kind of uh, devices for the human brains because uh, you need high power and there is that that, that, that is not suitable for Uh, for for the artificial intelligence this system because in the in, in our human brain also neurons and synapses they are connected together but here is the gap because the memory and cpu are separate so this computer cannot use for the artificial intelligence system so here so if we compare the conventional von neumann architecture versus neuro inspired architecture so here we already discussed the bottleneck issue but in this this is the cross wire structure here is the neurons and synapses they are connected together but because this is the cross bar architecture but if you see the cross bar architecture is like that uh, if you see you can see my fingers my fingers there is the interface this interface is the uh, synapse and both uh, my the bottom finger is the new uh, three synaptic neurons and the upper finger is the post synaptic neurons so that is the this kind of a structure so basically because in this uh, slides you cannot see but this is structure is the cross bar structure so you can reduce this issues because there is no gap but in in the von neumann architecture you can see the bottleneck issue that's why you cannot use for the artificial intelligence so here is the biological neuro subsystem uh, here is the human brain actually in the human brains uh, if you see the uh, 86 billion neurons in our very small brain we have and 86 billion you know how much the neurons are available in our human brains and every human brain uh, in the every uh, human brains with the billions of neurons due to they are connected with each other uh, with uh, synapses actually synapses basically synapses is the interface between two neurons i already discussed actually and that interface what happened uh, if you uh, if you apply the voltage or some signals uh, if i am talking about the electronic synapse if you apply to the, the pulses that that strength with uh, stronger that is strength with stronger due to the conductance if conductance is increasing it means that uh, data is storing or data data is memorized in our brain we can recognize or we can learn easily but if this if this interface is weaker interface means synapse 
if interface is weaker that we are forgetting so we'll discuss about this in the uh, next slides also uh, here uh, if you can see here uh, this is the artificial synapse uh, sorry uh, this is the biological synapse so this is the tails of the presynaptic neurons and this is the dendrite of the post synaptic neurons if you see here this is the small gap this is the interface interface means this is the synapse if you uh, if you see if you apply the voltage or something else or for example i tell you if you dip uh, your finger in the hot water suddenly you shock and that shock and that 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 uh, during that time one neuron want to say to another neurons that uh, my finger is burned into the hot water so how it will say so that will connect that that uh, uh, that interface with very harder or you can say that that conductance will increase at that time that conductance will increase due to the calcium and ion movement these calcium and ion movement due to the calcium or no, uh, sodium ion movement so that the that interface uh, will be uh, high denser or you can say that uh, will be uh, conductance will be increased that point and that transfer uh, th that one that first neuron transmit the data via synapse to the uh, another sign uh, another neurons and then we can think suddenly oh this is this is the problem if we, uh, we put our uh, finger in the hot water so and, and the another things also because uh, if you see the, here is the presynaptic neuron the postsynaptic neuron in our electronic synapse also if you see this is the presynaptic neurons and postsynaptic synaptic neuron we can use with these two electrode and here is the channel channel the uh, channel is due to the oxygen vacancy or oxygen ion movement so that working principle is the same like as the artificial synapse uh, uh, so we can correlate to each other so that is that's why rm only the choice to replace the biological synapse with electronic synapse and another thing see if it is the crossbar array and you can make the high dense devices and you can go to the sub nanometer range for the mass productions so that is the that's why rm only or memory cell only the good choice to replace the biological synapse with uh, electronic synapse so if you come to the ideal characteristics uh, of the synaptic devices there should be the ideal characteristics should be like this it's uh, it should be the conductance should be increased linearly with pulse number and this is the conduction means increasing it means you are learning and if you are going to forgetting then it should be like this also using if you are using the different pulses so here is the non linear rate of fit that is the also important properties so if this is the long term potentiation uh, is the if you see the conductance of the long term potentiation ltp means long term potentiation and uh, this one so it is if it is linear if it is linear that means your device is really good and the learning and forgetting will be good for your device and the depression also if you see the uh, depression is this things and uh, this is the potentiation below one and this is the depression so this if, if it is linear it is going uh, it is uh, if it is near about zero it means that you can learn and forget the data easily so that's why uh, our device must have uh, uh, high linearity uh, with pulse numbers so here is our device, device fabrication so if you see there are many uh, things uh, to fabricate the devices so we if you see the the sample preparation also the photo resist photo resist we are using to uh, to fabricate our devices that actually photo resist is the photosensitive material to uh, to make make our devices so and another thing the uv you use the uv light to patterning the devices here uh, in the step 4 uh, in the bottom electrode and uh, if you are the ion milling then uh, here is the uh, ion milling after ion milling you come to here and then lift off and then completely bottom electrode uh, confirm and in the step 8 if you see the photo resist again you have to because you have to uh, you have to uh, make a uh, restitution layer also and again we use the lithography process and in the lithography process also so here is the different uh, things you can see and here after that you you go to the development and that uh, this is the bottom electrode also confirm after bottom electrode uh, you uh, you do the electro electrode sputtering also again and this is the completely complete devices so this is the crossbar like this uh, so we will discuss here 
So actually, I choose the different kind of devices to make a artificial synapse here. So now I start my work here. First, I choose uh, a TAOX based de device because this is the resistive switching layer, or you can say the dielectric layer. Or oh, I use the five nanometer and top and bottom electrode is uh, ITO. ITO means indium tin oxide. Actually, these electrode both are very trans uh, all are transparent because nowadays researchers are working on transparent technology. So uh, we are working also the transparent technology for the future artificial synaptic applications. So uh, here is the uh, switching mechanism or resistive switching devices. If you see here, the device shows the bipolar resistive switching characteristic. Or in bipolar resistive switching characteristic, if you say uh, the set and reset voltage, uh, during the set and reset voltage, these are the wider variation during the set and reset voltage. That is the problem in this device. And another thing is also the endurance is very poor. So if you see the endurance uh, during the continuous switching cycles, First is the wide variation in the set and reset voltage and the fluctuation on the resistance here also. High resistance state and low resistance state. In case of the high resistance and low resistance state, if you see the variation, that's why this device is not usable. And another thing that this is the abrupt switching in both cases. So that device is not useful for the artificial synapse because for the artificial synapse, they must have the nonlinearity. But here is the non-linearity non because here is the abrupt switching if you see. So if it is a linear, uh, then we can use for the synaptic devices. So that device is failed for the artificial intelligence system. Now we change our device again. We use the uh, G GTO instead of TAOS. GTO is, means uh, zinc doped tin oxides here. But if you see, so this is the non-linear. on-off ratio, if you see the on-off ratio here, or you can see the on-off ratio is very small. And another thing also, this is only stable up to 500 cycles. It means that after 500 cycles, it shows the degradation again. So, so 500 cycles is not enough because the RM, they saw 10 to the power 12 cycles or more than that uh, in the AC endurance. So that's why this device is not suitable for the artificial intelligence again. So now, now we, we made the another devices that can fulfill the uh, 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 application for the artificial intelligence system. So actually we, we use bilayer structure, but we, we, because if you see, this is the abrupt switching and here is the non-linearity is very good. So we decided how, why we, why we are not combined to together. So here we decide to combine to both two layers together, and we made the bilayer structure here. And in the cross section TEM image, also you can see TOX here and GTO that that one, and top and bottom ITO here. In the uh, TEM and uh, image, also you can see here. Here are the bipolar HT switching. In the ten cycles, if you can say here the high, this is the highly stable. There is no variation in the set and reset voltage. It means that that device is useful for usable for. Uh, artificial intelligence system because uh, this here uh, the uh, during the set and reset voltage there is no variation and if you see the DC endurance is both states are highly stable if you see the LRS and HRS both states are highly stable to 10,000 cycles these are DC cycles we will discuss in the AC cycles also and if you see the transparency of the device so you can see this device this device is fully transparent and the transparency up to uh, around 85%. Uh, so 85% is really uh, good transparency for the uh, device. So here is the multi-level states because multi-level states are also necessary for the artificial intelligence system. So we got the 12 multi-level states. So uh, if you see the different multi-level state, all states are highly stable up to 10 to the power three seconds without any degradation. So only we got the one uh, LS, uh, LRS, LRS means low resistance state here, and HRS means uh, this one. So different uh, voltage. So we 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 we, we got uh, the different uh, multi-level states. Uh, so you can see here, and here is the cycle to cycle variation. Because cycle to cycle variation means because if there is the cycle to cycle variation, so device is not usable usable for the artificial synaptic application. So here, if you see. This is the cycle to cycle. If you see the LRS and HRS, 
both states are highly stable without any degradation. It means that this device can use for the artificial intelligence system. This is the device to device variation because uh, because some some if you are checking this is for the single single device because in the single device you can say oh there is no cycle to cycle variation. So that's why uh, we choose the different devices. Uh, from our uh, our wafer because in our wafer there is uh, 10,000 of devices. So we, we choose about 100 of the devices because we cannot check a full wafer in one time. It take around one year. So we choose randomly uh, from the wafer to check the device to device uniformity. So if you check the device to device uniformity, so in the LRS and, and LR, uh, HRS, both states are highly stable. So that's why we decided to use the de device for the artificial intelligence system. So here, so why bilayer device is highly stable? Why we are getting, get, getting high stable endurance and uh, another properties? So it, we can see the based on the uh, XPS analysis. Here, if you see, uh, is the top layer. In the top layer, if you see here, POX, the oxygen vacancies are 38%. And the middle layer, this one, the interface actually this is the interface of both layer 25 percent and uh, and the bottom bottom layer gto if you there are the 45 percent if you see the 45 percent vacancies and 25 percent are the interface that inter that that's why due to the less oxygen vacancies the filament is thinner here if you because during the uh, because this is the uh, mechanism actually due to the less oxygen vacancy here will be the thinner filament and again if we apply the negative voltage to rupture the filament or erase the data from the device so what will happen due to uh, due to the uh, joule heating effect that small uh, that, that thinner part will be ruptured first and device will change its state from low resistance to high resistance state so that is the mechanism so and again things because during the continuous switching cycles, that formation and rupture will happen at the particular point. So there is no variation in our device in bilayer. That's why we choose bilayer device uh, to control the variation uh, in our device. If you see the AC endurance of our device, our device AC endurance, if you see both states are highly stable, uh, up to uh, 1 million, that is really nice. And uh, that is applicable for the future uh, artificial intelligence application. Retention also 90 degrees Celsius because our device is fully transparent and the 90 degrees Celsius, uh, at the 90 degrees Celsius, both states are highly stable up to 10, 10 to the power, uh, sorry, 10 to the power 4 or 10,000 seconds. And it can go up to 10 years also because if you see up to here, there is no, no degradation. So it can go up to 10 years also. So here, if we see that uh, synaptic characteristic, if you uh, here is the potentiation depression, we use the potentiation pulses 0 0.8 volt for one microseconds, and depression pulses 0 minus 0 0.9 volt for one uh, one microseconds. So this is the po potentiation. Potentiation means you can also say this is the long term potentiation, and you can uh, it means the learning. This is the learning process from here to here. You can see the conductance is increasing. And uh, and if you want if you want to erase the data from the memory or our human brain or you want to uh, you want to erase the data from the synapse. So how to erase? It means that you have to apply the negative pulses again, and this means the, the conductance is decreasing. It means that uh, the the interface is going to weaker when you apply the negative voltage here. So this is the forgetting actually. So this means long term potentiation. This is the long term depression. So here is the nonlinearity also another uh, important parameter I already discussed. Nonlinearity should be around zero, but in our case, nonlinearity 1.4, sorry, 1.8 for the potentiation case, and uh, in in the uh, negative case also, uh, if you depression also, this is this is the same like here. This is the depression also minus 1.3, but it is not. Uh, not equal to zero, but is near about uh, one or uh, zero. It means that you can say so the device uh, characteristics are really good. So it, uh, in the picture, see if you see the repetitive uh, 790 potentials and depression cycle. Repetitive means means continue learning, forgetting, learning, forgetting, learning, forgetting, learning, forgetting, learning, forgetting. So it, if you see here, our device we saw here up to 790 means. It is really good for the artificial intelligence system. So we can use this device 
for the artificial intelligence, intelligence application or artificial synaptic application in the near future. So here is the image recognition because our work on the image recognition, this is the input image actually, we give the input image to our data and this is the uh, noisy data, actually noisy data, this is the our data. This is our data from potentiation depression data here. Uh, if you see, this is the random data and we use the hope field neural, neural network to, uh, to check the accuracy of our device. So we, uh, this is the noisy data is the our data here. Again, so after some iterations, after 17 iteration, so we, it can recognize easily this image again. So this is the recalled picture means recognize image and the accuracy of our device is 98%. So that is the really good actually, uh, because 90%, 98% accuracy of really good for this device. So here's the table comparison. We compare, compare our device with uh, another devices or previous reported work. If you see here, the our device is the one important thing. Our device is fully transparent. And if you see uh, the potentiation depression if 0 0.8 volt for my, one microsecond and 0 0.9, uh, minus 0 0.9 volt for one microseconds. And here, uh, so far only they shown 500 only. But in our case, 790, uh, 000, 790 cycles, uh, that's the repeatability. So it means uh, you can say the so learning and forgetting, it can go up to 790 cycles without any degradation. So here, if you check the non-linearity, uh, non-linearity uh, uh, for our device is really nice compared than other one. And uh, the transparency, uh, this is a fully transparent. And it means that you can say this device is suitable for uh, artificial intelligence system. Uh, here is the summary of our, de our device. So we discussed the single layer and bilayer devices, but our bilayer device is capable for the neuromorphic applications for the future prospect. And the long-term potentiation and depression at least seven, uh, 90 repetitive cycles. That, that's why I told you that the repeatability learning, forgetting, learning, forgetting continuously, it can go up to 790 uh, cycles continuously. And we use the uh, uh, to check uh, the our image recognition. So we use the 28 cross 28 pixel. Uh, in uh, they, we comprise comprising 7, 784 synapse to check the accuracy of our, de our device. So we use the uh, but one one pixel means one one synapse here. And HNN uh, can be successfully trained to uh, identify the input image with the training accuracy of more than 90. Sorry, it is a 98%. Uh, so here is the mistake in 17 iteration. So thank you very much. Thank you so much, sir, for such an enlightening session. Uh, as I can see, a few questions in the chat box. Uh, if you allow me, I can I can ask the questions one by one. Oh sure. Okay, sir. So the first question is from Miss Mamta Patel. Uh, why bilayer synapse has better performance than single layer one? Oh okay. Uh, I okay. Um, can you see here? Okay. Yes, sir. Can you see? Yes. yes. Uh, basically, because I've discussed here, uh, it is the because in our case, conductive filament is formed due to the oxygen vacancies. So here, if you case in the top TOX layer, here is the oxygen vacancies are thirty eight percent, and interface also because we use the uh, we use the uh, uh, XPS. Uh, this is the XPS is from uh, top to bottom. Top to bottom means depth profile of the uh, XPS. Uh, in the top, if you see TAOX, 38%. And the interface, interface vacancy is uh, 25%. And uh, the bottom, T, uh, JTO uh, is 45%. Due to this interface, because that the interface vacancies are smaller. If vacancies are less, the filament will be thinner here. And during the reset, because this is the set process, it means that set process means data is uh, storing in the device when you apply the positive volt in the top electrode and negative volt in the bottom electrode. So data is storing like this. And this filament is thinner due to the less oxygen vacancies as the interface. But if you want to rupture or if you want to erase the data from the device, so you have to apply the negative voltage due to the negative voltage because due to the Joule heating, I told you uh, in, in the conductive filament part, 
because we don't use any compliance current and application of the negative voltage here very high current will pass through the filament due to the high current pass through the filament thinner filament will rupture first so that's why uh, again if you going to storage the data again because only small part is rupture that filament will form continuously here and that's why during the continuous switching cycle filament will form rupture forming and rupturing at the particular point here so uh, okay and again uh, I, I i show you this this slide in the continuous if you see the continuous 10 cycles data there is no variation uh, here due to the no variation it means that filament is forming at the particular point uh, forming and rupturing is happening at particular point there is no variation but in single layer case if you see here in the single layer case the wide variation in the set and reset voltage due to the wide variation the, the filament is not forming at the particular point is the forming uh, at the different different point due to the different uh, formation rupture of the conductive filament the device is not stable uh, so that's why we uh, our bilayer device is uh, much better than single layer device thank you so much sir for such a detailed explanation uh, moving to the next question why NAND gate can't be used to store mass? Uh, this question is from Priya Khandelwal. Oh, actually NAND gate, this is the mature memory actually. Because in the emerging technology, researchers are working uh, to use the RAM uh, for the future. But there is the problem I told you in the first slides also. Uh, here, sorry. If we, because there are the challenges. Because uh, people don't know very, uh, uh, people don't know in detail uh, the mechanism actually for the RM. So if we don't know the mechanism and uniformity also, I told you the wide variation in the set and reset voltage and the select device leakage issue also in this case. Uh, and another thing, uh, if these these are problem because we we are we are research are going to short out these issues, but they are not completely resolved so far. So that's why NAND flash only mature device uh, for the data storage so far. Okay, sir. Moving to the next question. Uh, this is from Dhananjay. Uh, how researchers find out that device showing retention property up to 10 years or more than that? Oh, actually, uh, okay. Let me show you. Oh, here. So in this in this picture, if you see, uh, because uh, actually they guess to, to 10 year, basically for the 10 year, first uh, they, they put uh, their device to continuously set and reset case. First they set and, and they do reset and they check first uh, low resistance state, if it is stable up to continuously 10 year, but 10 years is the too long time. So they guess, so they predict actually, uh, like this, in case we check up to 10 to the power 4 seconds, and there is no degradation actually. If you see in the both states, uh, highly stable up to 10, uh, 10 to the power 4 seconds or 10,000 seconds. So if there is no there is no degradation, it means that we can predict the device can go up to 10, 10 years actually. So because 10 years is too long time, so it's very hard to hard to check our device continuously. But uh, researchers can do uh, only based on uh, their prediction. So in our case also, we say our device can go up to 10 years. Okay, sir. Thank you, sir. I hope the query of the participant is solved. Uh, moving to the next question. This question is from uh, Mr. Haryom Nagar. Why TAOX based device has wide variations in set and reset voltages? Okay. Yes. Here. Uh, okay, actually, uh, Okay, here. If if we see the bilayer device, if you can see, for example, if you remove, uh, because I don't have the single layer one uh, filament model. Uh, okay, uh, I come to the here. I think it will be better to tell you guys. Oh, here. Uh, okay, uh, if you can see this picture. Uh, this is the filament model. Basically, this filament model is not like that. This filament model should be in the conical shape. 
due to the conical shape if you see because uh, uh, if you apply the positive voltage in the top electrode oxygen vacancy move toward the bottom electrode and oxygen ion move to the top electrode and the oxygen ion accumulate at the top electrode here but in case uh, here the because vacancies are moving to bottom electrode so they will start to uh, make a bridge from like this so that bridge uh, that bridge should be uh, in a co conical shape conical shape means that filament this filament should be thinner at the in, uh, interface of top electrode and and the bottom electrode it will be thinner but if you apply the negative voltage what happen we don't know how much ion will come back and this one filament this filament sometimes rupture more and sometimes rupture uh, less because due to the variation in the voltage due to the high variation sometimes this filament is rupture more up to maybe it can rupture up to here if you can see uh, sorry i think i show you this pointer so here this this filament can rupture more sometime due to the high voltage if high voltage rupture here then again you have to set the device you need to high voltage because if this filament is rupture up to here so need higher voltage to form the filament again and if it, it is fully rupture then again the variation voltage variation in the voltage so due to the wide variation in the set and reset voltage this filament is not stable so sometimes it can form here sometimes sometimes it can form here sometimes it, it can form here so due to the instability of the voltage filament is not stable that's why single layer device is not stable uh, in our case also thank you sir uh, moving to the next question uh, this is from mr lokesh gambhir what other oxides can be investigated to increase the reliability? Yeah, another oxides also TOX is a mature one so far. HFO2 also mature. Uh, MGO, they are working on MGO and uh, Al2O3 also. But so far HFO2 and TAOX is the better uh, performance compared than other uh, oxides. Actually, because and T, uh, TAOX and uh, HFO2 uh, is the CMOS compatible uh, oxides. Because uh, in the say, semiconductor industry like TSMC, Samsung, Intel, so they are working on that. So they are uh, fabricating uh, with TOX and HFO2 for the future uh, memory application. These, that's why, because for HFO2 and TOX, the endurance is much better compared than other oxide materials. Thank you so much, sir, for such an informative session. Now I would like to request Dr. Lokesh Gambhir for a vote of thanks. Over to you, sir. Thank you, Dr. Neha. Artificial synapse and artificial electronic synapse for neuromorphic computing application. In fact, the floating gate memory devices and its application have been the key area of interest over the past decade across the globe. So on behalf of School of Applied Sciences and Center of Renewable Energy and Storage, I extend my humble gratitude to our keynote speaker, Dr. Dayanan Kumar. Thank you so much, sir. Uh, Dr. Denan Kumar from National Chang Kung University, Taiwan, for taking out your time in the holiday season. I understand that it's in holiday season. So thank you so much for taking out time for us and for providing an insight. Mention to our sponsor. I extend my humble gratitude to the Honorable Management, Suresh Kanga University, for continuous support and encouragement. Special thanks to respected conveners and associated faculties for the coordination of the lecture and the entire lecture series. Uh, two lectures are again in, planned in the future. A warm thanks and heartful appreciation to all the participants for their enthusiasm. I hope the session was insightful to you all and provided the glimpses of opportunities brought to, you, brought to your reach actually by the School of Applied Sciences, Suresh Kanga University. Thank you so much. We'll meet again in lecture three pretty soon. Over to you, Dr. Neha, for the concluding remarks, please. Thank you so much, sir. Thank you once again, Dr. Dayanan, for uh, uh, taking out time from your busy schedule for this session. I hope uh, all the participants have taken uh, note of the important points and uh, interesting results also. Thank you so much, uh, sir, once again. And uh, I call the session close for today. We'll meet again you, for the next session. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Thank you.